I like maps because they lie, because they give no access to the vicious truth, because great-heartedly, good-naturedly, they spread before me a world not of this world. These words from poet Wisława Szymborska express the idea that a map is a reflection of the place and time it represents, an interpretation of the world by the one who makes the map, the cartographer. I like maps too. I like to read them and create them. But the ubiquity of the digital maps that most of us use every day seems to be only matched by the banality. How did we get here? How did we get to the point where no one is lost and nothing can be hidden from technology? Throughout history, it has been the cartographer who has shown us the way, with a carefully chosen combination of lines and colors, translating the depth and breadth of our vast and seemingly boundless world and its details into a document to further mankind's understanding of places near and far. 2,500 years ago, in the Babylonian city of Sippar, a map of the Babylonian Empire was etched into a clay tablet. It displays the Euphrates River, mountains, and cities of the Babylonian Empire. What was beyond Babylon's influence remained uncharted by the maker of this map, though Babylon had knowledge of neighboring civilizations. Not surprisingly, the city of Babylon lies at the center of the map, as everything else radiates outward from it. The outermost circle is labeled as the Salt Sea. The cuneiform text tells the creation of the world, where the gods Marduk and Tiamat battle for supremacy, with the vanquished gods laying the foundation for the earth and its contents. The outlying triangles speak of unknown places and are labeled with the names of animals. Using a combination of mythology and geography, the map maker applies form and shape to an empire that, to most, only existed as a powerful yet ethereal gift from the gods. Ptolemy, a Greco-Egyptian astronomer living under Roman rule, wrote the geography around 150 AD. This treatise contains revelations and guidelines for geography and map making that would have a profound effect on cartographers and civilizations alike for centuries. The Great Library of Alexandria was still intact when Ptolemy wrote the geography. He had access to centuries of knowledge from such writers as Aristotle and Euclid and maps from far-flung reaches of the known world. He used this access to historical texts to create his own work, which was more of a how-to book than an atlas. He includes a definition of geography and how to draw a map of the world. Instructions on how to project latitude and longitude on a map and historical accounts of travelers. There is debate whether or not the original geography contained any maps at all, as all that are left are reproductions dating after its author's death. From what experts gathered from his writings, Ptolemy was beholden to no authority, and he was not commissioned by anyone to create the geography. He was only a scholar, a man who poured years of his life into defining a new science in geography and teaching cartographers how to measure and map the world. During the European Age of Discovery, Henricus Martellus, a German cartographer, sought to create a map that displayed the new knowledge of the world's geography gained from recent voyages of European explorers. Using the Ptolemaic model of projection and this new information, Martellus's map provides a more accurate view of Africa and much of Asia it is all but proven that Columbus consulted and studied this map prior to his voyage west in his search for a new route to Asia. Colonization, indigenous displacement, war, the legacy of post-Columbian exploration is a sorrowful blend of death, discovery, and enlightenment. European explorers charted the new world with its exotic wildness and tempting resources and created an insatiable hunger for monarchs who sought to increase their power and wealth. Many suffered, many died. The expansion continued, unabated by wilderness or conscience. The old world consumed the new, and civilization raged on. To call the launch of the Russian Sputnik 1 satellite in 1957 a game-changer would be a gross understatement. 
The Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union accelerated a race for advanced technology that jolted a world still picking up the pieces from the aftermath of the wholesale destruction caused by World War II. Cartography greatly benefited from these advances and transitioned from an individual to an institutional endeavor driven by defense and space agencies. Over the past 50 years, observation technology has grown at a shocking pace, and now we have mapped in detail much of Mars's surface as well. With geographic information system software, remote sensing, and land-based survey devices, there is hardly an inch of land on Earth that we cannot see from above or apply relevant data to for greater understanding of events, opinions, and behavior. Using these data and images, Google has shrunk our world to fit in the palm of our hands. We are all cartographers now, scrolling across millennia of mathematical equations on projections, ships and their crews lost and found on vast oceans and strange lands, and the steady hands of those with brush and ink. Cartographers have sought to make the world smaller by drawing it upon the page. But do the benefits of a smaller world outweigh the consequences? We search and discover with dots on a screen as we become dots on someone else's screen. As a technology that helps us find our new favorite record shop is the same technology that allows a precision guided missile to destroy a city block. What do we do with a God's eye view of the world when we ignore our better angels? We will need more than satellites and smartphones to find our own humanity.